Hello everyone. My one pound combat robot Sergeant Cuddles has gone through a lot of changes over the years and in this video I want to address the most recent version which is version 3 right here and the changes it has over version 2 which is this one. I primarily want to focus on the chassis, the different armor, the different wheels, and of course the different weapon. So let's start with the chassis. The first thing you'll notice when looking at version 2 versus version 3 other than the weapon is the size. Both of these are about 5 inches deep or 5 inches long depending on how you look at it. Sergeant Cuddle's version 2 is actually 4 and a quarter inches wide whereas version 3 is 5 and 3 quarters inches wide. So this is actually a full 1 and a quarter inch wider than the previous version. And you can see just how much bigger it is all around. And this serves two purposes. The first purpose is to get a longer and wider weapon. The effective area of this weapon is significantly wider than this. So if we kind of stack it up with the screw head starting here, you can see that it's almost double the effective weapon area. And secondly, it allows for a wider stance, which in theory should allow for better mobility, but I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later. So if we um, swap these out and look at the actual chassis, you can see the difference. Both of these still use the CNC machined um, UHMW, and I have a separate video on that. So if you want to look down at the description, I have a video on how this was machined to give you a better idea of how it was made. They both kind of share the same principles. The motors still sit in the channel, the wheels still have you know full protection around them, and there's these little tabs that hold the motor down. Um, fun fact, this is actually version 1 of the chassis and it actually got a little bit lighter after this. But the other thing you might notice is that everything just got a little bit slimmer. Um, these little weapon mounts are a lot thicker on the previous version. They went a little bit thinner here and just the overall thickness of the chassis got a little bit thinner on the new version. So this is a little bit more flexible, actually a lot more flexible than the previous version. So this is a lot heavier where this one's a lot lighter. So it allowed me more weights to put into the weapon and other components. But other than that, they're pretty much the same concept. They both have the cutout in the bottom for the um, armor plate. This one's just a little bit more complicated. They both share the same weapon channel. So overall, they're more similar than not. It's just the overall form factor has changed a bit. I still really like dealing with UHMW for the chassis because it's really resilient and it kind of flexes a lot, which is nice. And if we look at either of these chassis, you can see just how much damage they can take. Um, this one's a relatively newer chassis. I think this has only been in like a couple fights. And you can see that there's a lot of um, you know good little gouges here and there. And if we look at one of the original chassis, this one I actually just cut off um, the wheel guards. Just um, I was prototyping with this. But you can see just some of the really big hits um, that have happened inside of here. And none of these disabled the robot by any means. It um, took all these and just kept on going. And even a hit like this didn't even bind up the weapon. It was perfectly fine afterwards. And um, similarly with the new chassis, you can still see that this front is a relatively vulnerable area for horizontal spinners. They like to cut into the side of this. And then the rest of it just has, you know, a little cosmetic damage here and there, but it really doesn't withstand a lot of permanent damage. It's really hard to do anything with this chassis. They don't tend to break. They tend to bend and flex quite a bit. So it takes a significant amount of force to really do anything with this chassis and because it's very flexible any of the impact just goes into flexing and bending the material rather than shearing it. So I'm going to stick with um, using UHMW for pretty much all my one pound robots. Another notable difference between the version 2 chassis and the version 3 chassis is just the machining itself. Not only have I learned a lot more about machining in the time that these were made, but I've also learned a lot more about UHMW. Also, this is the first chassis to be made with my Tormach machine, whereas both of these were made with my homemade CNC machine, and there is quite a bit of a difference there. So the version 3 chassis is just a lot more accurate and has better tolerances to it. So when you look at things like the drum spinning, this drum just spins a lot more freely and it just has a lot less um, play in it. This one kind of rattles all over the place and this one is just a lot more solid. So that definitely helps. 
Also, the fixturing and just how I cut this is significantly different from these. So if you want to see more about that, check out the separate video in the description, and that goes into all the machining just for the chassis itself. Another difference between these two is the material choice for the armor. There is an armor plate on the top and the bottom of the chassis, mainly just to hold everything in, and also to stop attacks coming from over top. Version 2 used Gerolite G10, which is this stuff. It's very strong, very good at impact resistance. It's like a fiberglass um, epoxy resin type stuff. This is very similar to like um, what's used in a PCB material. The version 3 uses ABS, which is a very common plastic. It is very flexible and it's significantly lighter. This stuff is also a lot easier to cut. I can throw this down on my laser cutter, hit a button, and boom, it's cut. So this is a lot easier to prototype with as well. But since there is a plate on the top and the bottom, the little bit of weight savings that I got from using ABS was relatively substantial. I want to say it was like 20 or 30 grams over going with something like Gerolite, so that allowed me extra weight to be put elsewhere in this robot. The other thing is, there's just not that many overhead hammer robots or overhead spike robots, so I'm really not that concerned about you know, actual impact on the top or the bottom of the robot. So I went with just the ABS because I'm just not that concerned about that type of damage and I'd rather have the weight than the impact strength. Before I talk about the weapon differences between these, I wanted to talk about the wheels. On all previous generations of Sergeant Cuddles, I was using these Pololu wheels. They're really lightweight, really cheap, they're simple, they just press on, and they actually have surprisingly good traction. The only problem is when you slide sideways, the tread comes right off and then it gets jammed in the robot, which is not good at all. And this almost cost me a fight, so I decided to change away from these wheels. I decided to try out these um, foam wheels from FingerTech Robotics. They're these nice little foam wheels, and they have this aluminum hub that the wheel just kind of slides on like that, and then this other piece clamps on the other side. The problem I had with these was that the bore was just way too big. This was supposed to be a three millimeter to fit the three millimeter shaft, but as you can see, there's a ton of play in there. And even with the set screw, they're basically just gonna wobble like that. So I had to go through three different sets of bores to find one that was acceptable, that would run true. And even still, I had um, way too much wobble in the wheel. Additionally, I had a lot of these that were either cupped or kind of trapezoidal like this one to where there's a definite angle to where it's only making contact right there. And lastly, this material just provided no traction on the arena that we were at. The arena was just a sheet of steel that was um, unpainted, uncoated, and these just had no traction. So by the end of the tournament, I actually swapped these out for the Pololu wheels instead, and actually got traction, was able to drive around. So I'm gonna ditch these for something else. Right now I'm looking at using these Banebot wheels, which have this aluminum hub, very similar to the FingerTech, but the bore is much nicer. There's really no play on the bore, unlike the um, FingerTech bore, which is just really way too big. And the wheel itself is a lot slimmer, which is nice, so I don't have to go with these um, excessively large wheel openings. And then because it has this polyurethane tire, it has a lot better traction for a lot different environments and floor types. So I'm gonna try going to these. The only reason I didn't do these initially is because they're a lot heavier than the FingerTech wheels and just, you know, ever so slightly bigger. So next iteration is gonna end up using these. The final and probably most obvious difference between version 2 and version 3 is the weapon itself. For version 2, I'm using an aluminum drum with weapon teeth. They're made out of just stainless steel screws. And for version 3, I'm using a solid grade 5 titanium bar. They're very similar in concept, but they perform a little bit differently. So let's kind of disassemble these and show you the differences up close. Here are the two weapons removed from the chassis. We've got the um, original aluminum version one and two here, and then here is the version three out of titanium. 
So the original one was made out of 6061 aluminum. And if you're not familiar with all the different alloys, don't worry, neither am I. Uh, but 6061 is a relatively soft alloy. There's 7075 and 2021, I think, are the other two primary alloys used in robotics. 6061 is going to be the softest of the bunch. And that is good because it will take a lot of impact and it will just kind of dent and chip away like this. And it won't actually shatter like a 7075 would because that's a lot more brittle. So most of the damage is actually going into these screw heads. And you can see this one's actually bent over quite a bit. These are just stainless steel screws. So these are actually pretty darn strong. So you can see the kind of impact that is um, absorbed by these. And this drum was all turned on a lathe and then these um, flats were machined. So it's a relatively simple design. A lot of people are doing a design like this. For the version three drum, this is grade five titanium, which is a much harder um, material than the 6061. It is a little bit heavier in terms of density. However, both of these actually weigh the same amount. This one is a lot more solid throughout, where this one has a lot more opening. So even though this one's a lot bigger and the titanium is denser than the 6061 aluminum, they're about the same weight. I think it's like a gram or two difference. They're almost identical. Um, other than that, they're pretty similar. This one is going to be more of an egg beater. I don't think most people would call this a drum because traditionally drums well, look a little bit more like that. So this is kind of more of an egg beater design. And one of the reasons I went to a design like this is because with the old drum, I kind of had an issue actually making contact with opponents. If you really look at this, I only really have a contact area from here to here. So that's the only place I can really make contact. This really won't ever make contact and there's nothing over here. Whereas with this one, I have this long flat that spans the entire length of the weapon. And so if you look at it like that, it really is effectively double the contact area. So this one, as long as you're coming at the robot somewhere from the front, it's probably gonna make contact with this. This also acts as an armor. If you look at some of these dents and some of these um, scrapes on it, this absorbs a lot of impact that would otherwise go into a portion of the chassis. So having this across the front is a good plate of armor as well. In terms of how these mount inside the chassis, they both mount pretty much the same way. In one side you have a large recess, that is where the outrunner motor gets press fit inside and they both use the exact same motor. And on the other side, they both have a recess or pocket for a standard skate bearing that just slides inside like that. So once the motor is snapped on one side and then the bearing is put on the other side, you have a spinning weapon like that. Both of them use just a simple plastic washer that kind of sits between the frame and the bearing. And then there is just a screw that acts as the shaft on the other side. Now there's a slight difference in the shafts. On one of them, I use this um, countersink head screw. And unfortunately, cutting the profile for this in the UHMW is really tricky. You can use just a standard countersink, but very few of them are sharp enough to get a good cut. So ultimately, it ends up looking something like this. It just kind of chews away at it. So this doesn't really sit as flush as I might like in there. And you can see it doesn't really screw in perfectly straight either. So I really wasn't happy with how this ultimately went. So for the new version, I went with this socket head cap screw that I end up turning down on the lathe. So this started out as a standard socket head cap screw that was a lot taller. I cut it flush, so it has a relatively thin profile head, and then this is largely hollow through the inside to save weight. And this has a much different and easier to machine profile. And so when this is screwed in, it actually sits perfectly flush with the side of the chassis. And it's pretty much guaranteed that it's gonna sit straight as well. So this was just a lot better um, version of how to do it. And I like this a lot better. It just kind of looks pretty slick too. I decided to make a specific video just for the machining of the weapon because this was the first time I was dealing with a part this complicated and the first time I was dealing with grade five titanium. So if you wanna know a little bit more about how I made this, check out the description below for the video on the machining for the version three weapon. 
I guess this is the part of the video where I kind of give a sum up in my impressions of how everything went. Um, I think overall I like most of the improvements for version 3. I definitely like the weapon drum a lot more. It's just a lot easier to just kind of point the front of it and go from there. I would like to see a little bit more power in this weapon. I don't really have any issues spinning up, but I just feel like I could use a little bit more oomph. So I think what I'm going to try and do is switch to a 4-cell battery. Currently I'm using a 3-cell, so the extra cell would give me a little bit more voltage, so a little bit more RPM on the motor for the weapon, and a little bit more on the drive motors themselves. As you notice, I really didn't address the electronics whatsoever in this. I'm still using the um, 20 amp Simon K ESC for the weapon motor, and then the two tiny ESCs for the drive motors, and everything seems to be working out okay. I think my battery is a little bit too big. I'm using a 500 milliamp hour battery. I think I could easily scale that down to probably a 300. So definitely see some battery changes for the next version of this. And of course the wheels, I'm going to have to do something different with the wheels. I'm going to move over probably to those Bainbot wheels. We'll see how that goes. But I definitely think the form factor of the chassis will remain the same. I'll probably have to do some little tweaks just to fit in the new different wheels. But other than that, I like this form factor and I'm going to stick with the weapon at least for a little bit. So yeah, we'll see how those changes go. And um, hopefully that will be the final iteration of Sergeant Cuddles, at least for now. So thanks for watching, and be sure to check out the specific video for the machining of the weapon and the machining of the chassis. We'll see you again.